There is not much that can be as frightening for a toddler parent as turning around to find your toddler has placed something highly chokeable in their mouth. So today we're going to be talking about why children seem to want to put everything in their mouths, what they're learning from that, and some of the ways that we as parents can set ourselves up for safety, but also for being a little bit more at ease so that our children can freely engage more. As a pediatric occupational therapist, this question of why is my child putting everything in their mouth is probably one of the most asked questions that I get from parents because it is really intimidating to feel like every single moment there's a choking hazard about to happen. I know from experience that a lot of these things we don't also have a lot of control over when we're in unfamiliar places and a lot of them really surprise us. There are things that we don't expect. My first child didn't really put a lot of things in their mouth. My second child my goodness, everything, everything that she could find went in her mouth. The first time that she crawled, actually, I put her down on her play mat. I didn't know that she was crawling yet. She was only like five months old. And I put her down on her play mat. I just went into the kitchen quickly to do something, came back within a minute and she was gone. Now, I immediately thought like, somebody's taken my baby. I was running all around the house looking frantically for her. My husband was outside on the other side of the house and we were just hysterical looking for our child. Of course, what she'd done is just gone through the sliding doors had been open that led to the outside. And she just kind of on her tummy, commander crawled down there and was in the mud, face full of mud, which is something that she ended up loving to do and did very, very often to my utter horror and surprise. So today I want to talk a little bit about why this happens, that children are always putting things in their mouth. But let's just start out by saying that this is part of development and that if you've ever found yourself in one of those situations like I did as a parent where you're suddenly like, how on earth do they ever think of putting mud in their mouth? Don't worry, you are not alone. <laughs> so the reason that children put so much into their mouth is because their mouths are very receptive to different kinds of textures and sensations. This is where they are learning. They're learning how something feels by putting it into their mouth, feeling it around their, their tongue and on the sides of their cheeks, and then having a better sense of what that thing is. In these early years, our children are, of course, like little sponges for learning. So they are eagerly looking for things that they they can learn more about whether that is the mud or your toenail clippers so we want to make sure that the things that are in their environment are really safe for them to be putting it in their mouth as well as when we are in unfamiliar places now you may have noticed that your child seems to do this more than other children around you there can be a couple of reasons behind this the first one is that each child has what I like to refer to as a sensory cup there is a certain amount of sensation that they will seek out and that will feel good and right to their bodies and some children have bigger sensory cups which means they just want more sensation that facilitates their learning best and makes them feel as what we call in therapy in a calm alert state this is in each area of sensory processing so it might be that they have a big sensory cup and they love to put things in their mouth but that they have a smaller movement cup and they don't like to move around as much that's part of our unique identity as people that we each have our own kind of way that feels best for our bodies if you are noticing that your child is putting a lot of things in their mouth it could be teething it could be that they just have a bigger sensory cup the other thing that it could be and this is especially for children that are later in the toddler stage so we're talking about not just babies but you're noticing that your two-year-old and three-year-old seem to be putting things in their mouth a lot more is that when we put things in our mouth, it is inherently quite calming. If you think about the first thing that a baby does when they cry is look for milk. They also are really calmed by things like pacifiers, by sucking their own finger, maybe by sucking your finger. And it's the same for us as adults. If we are stressed, sometimes the first thing that we go to is something that we can drink, whether it's a hot or cold drink, or a piece of chewing gum, or maybe some food, but that movement of our mouth can really help in calming. So those are our four big reasons for children putting things in their mouth, that they are learning, that they are sensory seeking, that they are calming themselves, or that they are possibly teething and just trying to undo some of that discomfort. We generally see that children around the age of 18 months to two years old 
stop putting everything in their mouth. They may still really like a sucking bottle or something like that. They're not constantly picking up everything that they see and putting it in their mouth. If it persists past that age to the point where you feel still with your two and a half year old, three year old, that you have to be constantly aware and on guard of what is around, you might wanna seek out the support of an occupational therapist or a speech and language pathologist that can just look at your child's oral motor functioning and the sensory component behind that as well. So the three things that I recommend that toddler parents do, and this is really for all toddler parents because putting things in uh, their mouths is a natural part of development for all young children. So it doesn't matter whether your child is on the like high spectrum of doing this more often or on the lower spectrum, it's great to have this kind of game plan in your mind beforehand can just really set you at ease. So the first one is kind of establishing and understanding, depending on where you live, what things are more dangerous and what things are less dangerous. So why this is important is because we can become a little bit hypervigilant and actually interrupt our children's ability to explore and learn. So I see this often happening with something like a piece of grass or a leaf. While yes, if those things are in your child's mouth, you want to definitely be present and watching that they're okay. If they pick it up in their hand, we don't need to jump on top of them and act like it's the same as having a rock in their mouth or a marble or something that is hazardous. So we want to kind of have in our mind a kind of loose idea of what is the red zone, like what is definitely this cannot go near your mouth. What are the things that are kind of we want to make sure that we're present and watching when they're putting those things in their mouth and what are the things that are really okay so like a stuffed bear or a soft ball or certain toys that are made for teething are really okay for children to be putting in their mouth and playing with other things like a leaf or grass or mud are things that we want to you know, allow them to be exploring with their hands and possibly be more present in case we think that they might be putting it in their mouth. And then, of course, anything that is small and hard, like Lego pieces or rocks or marbles or anything like that, we want to be very vigilant that those aren't available for our child to put it in their mouth. My second big tip is that water play and sensory safe bins are your best friend. As we said, part of the reason for your child putting things in their mouth is because of learning and exploration and sensory seeking. So we wanna give opportunities for our children to explore all of those things in a safe way. So things like painting with water, those water wow books, or taste safe sensory bins like lemons cut up into water, or peas and water in a sensory tub are great ones for letting your child have that experience of learning without you feeling absolutely on edge and nervous about what they're going to put in their mouth. Now the third tip is especially when you are outside of your home, when you are at friends homes or at the park or you know just in an unfamiliar place that you don't know whether there is possibly some Lego on the floor or something that could be a choking hazard is to have clear ideas of how you can put boundaries in place. In a home situation that might be having a baby gate between your baby's area and your four-year-old's Lego section. In a park this might be something like making sure that you have your stroller or your baby carrier available and if you notice that there are a lot of things that are not great for your baby to be putting in their mouth to just put them in that boundary. So put them into the stroller or put them into the carrier so that you have that ability to not be so stressed out about what they're putting into their mouth. Now, if chewing and drooling are still a concern for you, and especially if your child is a bit younger, so past 18 months to two years, and you're wanting to learn a little bit more about why children chew on things, check out the video that is on your screen now. It's an interview that I did with an occupational therapy assistant, and it's all about chewing and what we can do to support our children in that. I'll see you over there.